If you ever wanted to try different OS such as Color OS, MIUI, One UI, etc., but you have a smartphone from a different brand so with the help of Project Trouble or Port ROMs, you can use it and in this video I will be checking out one of the Port ROMs for Redmi Note 7. So as you can see I'm using Funtouch OS 12 which is based on Android 11 and stock kernel as Lineage Kernel, which I replaced with Nexus Kernel version 9.5. Nightlight has been renamed to Eye Protection which is under Display Settings. Color Temperature Adjustment changes the display color to warm or cold. There is option for font style as well which can be downloaded from Theme Store. There are some status bar tweaks as well. We can change notification method also there is toggle for network speed and battery percentage. Top area display hides or shows the notch area for selected apps. Under lock screen and wallpaper we can find always on display which has a lot of styles but it is no worky worky. Some features like blur. Screen off animation and home screen transition is under dynamic effects and we can change charging animation too. On the bottom of sound settings we can find super audio which is audio enhancer and which works great and there is hi-fi as well, which can enable hi-fi audio for music apps that are selected from the list. Under here we can find app clone which works like parallel space but the app clone only supports social media apps. For battery settings we can find background power consumption management which block the apps from running in background if the power consumption is high which is like battery optimization but more aggressive. Under security we can find privacy and app encryption which can lock or hide any app. Oh no, cancer. Privacy includes some extra options too like recent app preview which have the option to turn on blur while in recent view for some apps. There is screen capture protection too which blocks the screen recorder from capturing password. And lastly unlock to turn off phone which requires password to turn off device. So this is the special game mode that has some amazing features, which includes eSports mode that should block all notification and calls plus some other things like locking brightness and adaptive frame rate. Autoplay with screen off mode can be pretty good if there is a game which can be played while the screen is off or without looking at the screen. I was excited to try 4D game vibration but that excitement was gone after finding out that it doesn't work. 4D game vibration can provide haptic feedback while firing a gun or getting shot and things like that. In game sound quality can be improved from game sound quality and effects, and this feature lets you choose two modes, near field and wide. You can also choose the audio device type and some other features are accidental touch prevention. Game picture in picture allows some apps to be opened in a floating window while gaming. Here we have a lot of Vivo S Capture is one of them and it is just a shortcut option for capturing screen. Smart Split is a shortcut for splitting screen and this feature can automatically suggest some apps if you split the first app. Smart Motion is gestures related, Smart Turn On Slash Off Screen is like ambient display. And Smart Wake is not working so I skipped it. Quick action is like long press power button gesture. But here we have to long press volume down to activate the selected option. Easy touch shows a small circle overlay once turned on. Turned on? This doesn't sound good. So it includes some more shortcuts which is like assistive touch from iOS and we can change the options as well. Well this feature is for girls and for some users that is in your mind right now. Here we can find multi turbo which gives a boost to the system but I think this isn't working as this is a port ROM. Oh let's go that's class! <laughs> Here are some Vivo bloatware and some features in action.
Wide Vine is L3 which means no HD for you rich peeps and according to Play Store safety net is passed but with safety net checker app it isn't and by the way I used Magisk hide props to certify the device. So the benchmark results looks quite good with 16 threads as the CPU throttled to 85% but the score doesn't look good, so let's have a look at gameplay. Are you waiting for me? Oh, hell! Left. Clear! Nice shot! Kill! Reloading! Gaming is quite good, but there were some minor lags while screen recording, and the average FPS that I got was around 30 to 40 FPS with extreme FPS enabled. So it is okay to play with stock kernel. But hardcore gamers knows their way. There are many bugs and the first of all is app crashing randomly which is the most irritating thing ever, Bluetooth doesn't work at all, and the system becomes laggy as you keep using it, so in terms of stability it is not the best, and location is inaccurate. Google Maps always asked to calibrate GPS. To be honest I was looking for a place but I was at the wrong place, thanks to this OP GPS bug. So I won't suggest you to try this as this port ROM isn't stable, bugs are a lot, gaming is okish, why divine is L3, though some of the features are pretty good, and I like some of them however. If you still want to give it a shot then feel free to do so, it's your choice in the end but I still don't recommend. It feels like this port ROM was released early just like most companies do nowadays. Here are some of my other videos that you can watch and enjoy. And that's it for this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also follow me on Instagram.